I know you're tired. I know you're broken. And it feels like you can't take any more. When you have come to the end of yourself. But all of this means one thing. That you are a survivor. Your greatest weakness, the hurt, the pain, the betrayal, the feeling that you get when you wake up and you are inundated with so much responsibility. It feels like you can't breathe. Paralyzed by the pain of life. And I can only imagine what it's been like to be you. But I'll tell you this, there is a switch inside of every one of us. And at any moment in life, you can turn that switch from surviving to winning. Because ultimately, survival is an illusion. There's only two types of people in this world. There's people who lose, and there's people who win. And it's hard to be a loser, and it's hard to be a winner. Today, I want you to make a decision to flip the switch inside of you from surviving to winning. It's time to win. See, the human being is the highest order of creation on earth. And one thing I am crystal clear about is that at any moment in your life, you can come across a speech or a piece of information. And if that information is applied, that revelation, it can forever alter the fabric of your existence. It's in the midst of our greatest storm. If you, if you can hear my voice, you've survived. You survived the hurricane. You survived the storm. You survived the trial. You survived the betrayal. You survived it all. In order to change your life, all you gotta do is flip this switch from surviving to winning. See, a survivor will sit and wallow in the pain of the past, but a winner will build even when they are broken. I may be weak, I may be hurting, I may have pains, I may have been down, but I am not out. I am getting out of this hole. Today, I'm getting out of the pit of misery and into my destiny. Your pain is not bigger than your purpose. And even though you have been crushed in this very moment, you still have your calling. Flip the switch from weakness to winning, from hurting to conquering, from losing to champion. You can't worry about yesterday because yesterday is not coming back to look for you. Who speaks to the broken? Who speaks to the individuals that's still in the process? I'm dropping this for you. I'm telling you to keep going when you face opposition. I'm telling you to keep going when you face adversity. Believe in everything that you are and understand that within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. I wish I could tell you that if you just keep going, it's going to get lighter. But that's not the truth. The truth is you gotta find something within. He's going to have to dig deep inside his soul to break out that king. But I'm telling you to get rid of the things that's not giving you the strength that you need to keep living the life that you have been given. When you come over depression, you raise your arms like a champ. When you overcome bankruptcy, you raise your arms like a champ. When you come over divorce, raise your arms in victory. You have the warrior spirit in your soul. You have the warrior mindset. That dream is not going to just sit there and wait for you to come and get it. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, when you ain't got nothing left in your tank, you got to think about the people in your life that you're going to respond on. And then if you can think about them, you can go one more mile. You will go one more day at work. Live. Breathe. Life. You. That's what it's about.
Here we go again. It's not about the running, the swimming, the push-ups, the sit-ups. It's about what those things do for your mentality. You don't get better on the couch. Same old shit again. Why is one big tug of war between mediocrity and trying to find your best self? Marching down the avenue. Where everybody's getting weaker, I'm getting stronger. One more day and we'll be through. At the bottom of insecurities, fear, self-doubt, lies, was me buried in the fetal position. How I got out of that was recognizing, being honest with it, being truthful with it, and then fix it. Stay in your own mind. Don't let them own yours. I wasn't born this motherfucker. I made them. Here we go again. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to eat. Because you can go 21 days, maybe 30, but without eating. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want water. Because you can go about three days or so without it. I said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. Then you'll be successful. And so one of the things I want to do for you as an educator today, you don't necessarily need better skills per se. That's not what you need. But what some of you need is to go from 70% to 120%. Some of you need to go from 80% to 120%. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your daddy's not in your life. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your father's in prison. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your mom is working two jobs. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your grandma is raising you. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because you live in a community where education is not valued. So I don't care what you do academically, when you leave here, you can't go and get credit for getting A's. That in your neighborhood, in your community, nobody affirms you for reading at a certain level. Nobody affirms you for doing well on your ACT or your SAT. Where you come from, education is not affirmed. So even if you are a scholar, you have to keep it to yourself. You have to suppress it. So the reason why I give 120 is because your daddy's not there to give 80. And your mama's too tired to give 100. And your grandma is washed out, so she's giving 50. And y'all do that little stuff about you gonna eat, but y'all ain't got no dog on motor. You get tired quick. You, you practice for one or two days, you roll out. You do a couple of hours, you tired. But yet you compete against people right now, that's their lifestyle. And you think they about to let you take their lifestyle? I don't want to do it as much as I want to eat. I don't want to do it as much as I need to eat. I want to be the best in the world as bad as I want to breathe. I want to be the Michael Jordan of education. I want to be the LeBron James of education. And I ask you the question. I ask you the question today, are you giving 120? I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to eat. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want water. I said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Winston Churchill said the destiny of man is not measured by material computation. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. And he said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space. Which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You have the capacity to leave a lasting impact, an indelible impression upon this world. It is about becoming a master of your own destiny as your understanding and perception of life deepens you will see everything is in your hands all of us have something in us that we must live and if we don't know what it is right now we must create it or we must find it all of us have this whatever this this something is just try and dig deep and find out what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and live it like there's no tomorrow I don't care what it is. I don't care what you want to do. 
but do the hell out of that. It takes, again, hard work and it takes perseverance. And again, it just takes context and it takes perspective. You got to put your stake in the ground and go after this thing called your future because no one's going to give it to you. Don't talk about it. Don't mull it over. Don't plan for it. Just get after it. All of us have seen our destiny at some point in time and we decided not to listen. We decided to ignore it, to know that's, that's not for me. Life came in and slapped us side the head and we stopped dreaming anymore. Give it everything you got. And if you fail, you can at least do what? You try. But if you don't go out there and give 120%, you're not a man. It's time to understand that if you want to get something out of your life, you got to be willing to work for it. How much are you really willing to give? You have an everlasting potential. And as long as you have a heartbeat, as long as you have air in your lungs, you have an opportunity to change this world, change your life, and live your dream today. Don't you dare settle for anything less than what you know you can get. Just make sure you make your mark. Make sure you make your mark in this world. When you become what you're supposed to be, then you're going to bless somebody else. And that's what it's really all about. If you don't get serious with what's going on in front of you, you're going to forfeit everything that you were born to be. Take the leap of faith and believe that everything is going to be all right. Take that leap of faith. Trust yourself to bring out that king, that legend. As a human being, the strongest thing you've got is your force of will. So take that force of will and make that happen. Make sure every breath you take counts for something. That when you get to the spot, you get to the spot for a thousand others, a million others. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting like this is your last day on the planet. Claim the sacred spaces of your minds and move toward that destiny with patience, perseverance, and prayer. Tick tock. What is ticking off here is not the clock, it's your life. You are running out of time. I hear the clock ticking. That's what I hear, and the end is nigh. You don't, you don't know how much time you have. You keep telling yourself you got time and watch what happens. If you don't take a hold of your life, if you don't get serious with what's going on in front of you, you're gonna forfeit everything that you were born to be. Time waits for no man. That clock, it's always ticking. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, or your treasures. When's the time to jump in the pool? When's the time to kiss the boy? When's the time to get married? When's the time to take the training wheels off the bike? When's the time to live your life? The answer is, I don't know. Nobody knows. There's no right answer. There's that moment in time. However you spend your time, that tells you who you are. Stop waiting for tomorrow. Stop waiting for the perfect moment. And I'm saying to you, whatever you gotta do, do it, because if you don't, life is gonna whoop you until you surrender. Tick tock. Who's not gonna see you accomplish your goals? Who's not gonna see you blow up? Who's not gonna be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor with you? Who put in why? Because you average. And one day you're gonna be great, but you think you got time. Fight that ticking clock with everything you got. Time is one of the most powerful, important tools that any of us will ever get because time we never get back. You got to have faith, and that faith gives you patience. That is not gonna happen as quickly as you want it to happen. There's not an hour that's gonna go by. There's not a minute that's gonna go by that is not accounted for. Greatness takes time. Tick tock. You don't always have to talk about what you're up to. 
Let your results speak for you. Let your actions speak for you. Social media doesn't always need to know about your grinding and hustle. People will know about it when they see your results. It's the one thing you can't fake. There's a lot of fake people out there talking a lot of crap about who they are and what they've accomplished. But one thing you can never fake is results. Be that person, the one who delivers, not the talker, not the statement maker, the result maker. Confuse them with your silence and shock them with your results. Under talk, over deliver. There's a saying, when you build in silence, they don't know what to attack. Don't let the haters get a chance to attack you before you've done anything. Build in silence and shock them with your end result. You must know the results will come. If you get your head down and work, you do not need to tell everyone what you're up to or who you think you're going to be. Just show them. The results will come if you get your head down and work. Your work ethic will show in your result. Your hustle will show in your results. Your ability will show in your results. Your greatness will show in your results. Never in your talk. There's no need to tell people how great you are. When you are truly great, they will tell you. Let your results speak for you. Let your actions speak for you. Confuse them with your silence and shock them with your results. Your work ethic will show in your results. Your hustle will show in your results. Your ability will show in your results. Your greatness will show in your results. Never in your talk. You really want me on the team. What's your approach to recruitment? You want first place, come play with me. You want second place, go somewhere else. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. That's why he's the best player in the game. Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. So because you know what you want, the world's giving you exactly the information you 100%, need to become better at it. Because you know what you're looking for. So many guys tell stories about your work ethic. Yeah. What was really your work ethic like and for how long did you stay disciplined? Um, well, I mean... I mean, every day, I mean, since, you know, for 20 years. I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability. Man, my vertical was a 40, it wasn't a 46 or a 40, mm -hmm. 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive, right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So like from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game mm -hmm. and it just never changed. It's a good separation for me, you know, emotionally to be able to put myself in a place where at practice or when I'm training or during games, I switch my mind to something else switch my mode into something else, right? For me, it's the equivalent of Maximus, Desmus, Meridius, and Gladiator picking up the dirt, smelling the dirt, it's go time, right? So that was my mental switch. It was like an actor getting ready for a film. You gotta put yourself in that cage. When you're in that cage, you are that character. And then when you leave there, it's something completely different. But when I'm in that cage, bro, don't touch me, don't talk to me. <laughs> Leave me alone. 
I, I told my professor, what happens if I fail? He said, what happens if you pass? I said, but what happened if I don't get it? What happened if I put in all these years and it don't work out? He said, but what happens if you put in all these years and you get it? You got skill and you got will. You got skill and you got will. Two total different things. You were born with certain things, but to get to the next level, and not just get to the next level, to stay at the next level, you gotta have will when you get to that next level. So when you play, you have to compete. When you have an opportunity, why would you give 80% when you have an opportunity? Somebody answer that for me. Y'all talk, why would you give 80%, 70%? Why wouldn't you always give 120%? For real, you might get it, but right now what? Oh, I can't hear y'all. You may get it, but right now what? You don't have it. You have nothing to fear. Guys, you already overcame all kind of stuff. Because a lot of you don't see that what's gonna take you to that next level that's gonna separate you from everybody else because you gotta have something that separates you. What's gonna separate you from everybody else? Right? I don't know what that is for you. But just talk about it. when you hear my when you hear my videos, one of the things you notice that separates me from everybody else, I don't do what in any of my videos. I don't curse and you've never seen me cuss before. You've never seen me drink before. You've never seen me smoke. I'm not against drinking and smoking, but my brand is I don't drink, I don't smoke. What are you gonna do to separate yourself? Like, I do things to separate myself from everybody else. The passion that I have when I speak, the grind that I have when I do what I do. What are you going to do to separate yourself? People you're not even going to be hanging out with. All I want to hear is E, they grinding like they ain't never grind before. Johnny, I want to hear they out there handling that rock like E, they monsters, E. They like freaks out here, E, like they going hard, E. That's all I want. What's some more stuff that's keeping you from doing what you're supposed to do? I love it. You have an opportunity of a lifetime. And, 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 and what, what I'm trying to get you to understand is, when you understand you have an opportunity, you, just, you play a little different. And it was track and field. And the gym instructor pointed to my father online and said, Cyril Tyson, everyone look at him. He does not have the body type that would excel in track and they used him as an example. And he says, what? No one is gonna tell me what I can't do in my life. And he used that as a reason to start running. And he started track in that moment. He decided that his, one of his next tasks in life would be to take up running and excel at it. Within a few years of that, he became world-class. At one time, had the fifth fastest time in the world oh. in the middle distance. They don't run this anymore, 600 yard run. In 1948, the Olympics was not yet ready to come back to us because we're still reeling, roiling from the Second World War. Instead, they, it was still an Olympics. It was called the GI Olympics and it was held in Hitler's stadium. So he competed in Hitler's stadium uh, in the late 1940s just one of the great memories of his life. But the reason I'm saying all of that is they were competing against the New York Athletic Club. In the day, once you graduated college, you needed some sanctioning body to compete with. So there were athletic clubs. The New York Athletic Club at the time accepted only white Protestants. So there was another club called the Pioneer Club, which took everybody who was not accepted to the New York Athletic Club, which was basically blacks and Jews is really what that came down to. And his best friend, Johnny Johnson, okay, was coming around the back stretch, might have been the quarter mile, coming on the final straightaway. And a runner from the New York Athletic Club is a few paces behind him. And Johnny Johnson overhears that runner's coach say, catch that And he overheard this. And so what did he say to himself? He said, this is one he ain't gonna catch. <laughs> and that extended his, his, his lead 
to the finish line. And he tells this story not with any bitter tone. So he never had that kind of tone when he shared those stories with us. It was, here's an occasion to parlay what today might be called a microaggression into a reason to excel even more than you had expected of your own abilities and talents. And so I have taken that lesson with me. How did you get mentally and emotionally so strong where it doesn't bother you? Well, you know, it's, you got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not, you know, you, you kind of got to get over yourself. Like, it's not about you, man. Like, okay, you feel embarrassed. You're not that important. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. Yeah, that's where you go. Get over yourself, right? Like you're worried about how people may perceive you and like you're walking around and it's embarrassing because you shot five air balls. Get over yourself. Right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced out, plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short. Right? I got to get stronger. Uh, I got to train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I got to tailor it for an 82 game season mm. so that when the playoffs come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale and say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I got well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Done. Done. I wasn't successful because of who I was. Like in a lot of y'all for real, here's what you got to stop doing. You hold people to the fire when they don't do what they're supposed to do, but you give yourself a pass. Like, and you got to stop doing that. Like I see in this generation, people will let their kids get away with stuff that I know you wouldn't let nobody else's kid get away with. But sometimes when you're so close to something, you don't treat it, in the, you don't, you don't treat it real. Like you give it a pass because it's your, it's your baby. But if somebody else was to get on your couch and do that, you'd have a fit. Or somebody. So what I had to start doing was saying, you got to stop holding other people to the fire. You got to hold yourself to the fire. And I realized that without a schedule, I was the one that was messing up my life. And I realized I needed a schedule because I wasn't, I wasn't the, the brand to get me where I wanted to go, if that makes sense. Like that version of Eric Thomas would never make me a one percenter. I realized that. So when I sat down with Warren Buffett, three things that blew my mind. I never really realized where his money came from. So the first thing I did was I was like, yo, his money comes from investments. Well, what happened was when he was 12 years old, his father gave him his first like grand and let him make an investment. So I realized he's not getting up early in the morning just to get up in the morning. What he says he does is he reads. He doesn't just read books. That's not what he does. He reads financial reports. So this dude was telling me he read a financial report of General Motors in like 1964. And I'm thinking like, why would you be reading? It's 2014. He was reading the document, the financial, listen to me. He's a financial genius. What was he reading? Finances. For real, y'all be coming up to me like, yo E, what you reading? Why? You trying to be a motivational speaker? You trying to be the next Martin Luther King? You trying to be the next Mother Teresa? Why are you trying to read what I'm reading? Like, what are you trying? Like, you trying to impress somebody? Why are you reading what I'm trying to read if you're not trying to be me? You, he was not reading Mother Teresa. He wasn't reading about leaders. He was reading a financial report from 1964 General Motors. Why? Because General Motors had one of their successful financial years in 1964. And so he was looking for the clues of what were they doing specifically in 1964 that can be duplicated in 2014. That's what he was looking for. So a lot of you getting up early because ET get up early, but you getting up early for no reason. You just up early. So be careful that your routine is pointing to where you're trying to get to and you're not wasting time. So I'm looking at Warren Buffett. He says he reads six hours a day. He reads, he reads financial documents six hours a day. That's the first thing he does, seven days a week, six hours. But watch this, you go, ooh. When you read something for six hours times seven, that's 42 hours, right? That's 42 hours a week, right? I don't know how many hours that is a year, 
But guess why he makes the best financial decision? Because all he's doing is financial stuff. That's, he putting in 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 hours. If you're gifted in three areas, then that means you're gonna have to get 30,000 hours just to be like basically a master. But what if you did one thing and got 30 hours of information in just that one area? You guys got 10,000 in three different areas. So while you got 10,000, I got 40, 50,000 in one area, what? Speaking. And guess what the disc is? The disc is still going further into personalities. It's still the same exact thing. So I'm putting more hours on top. So the routine is important because eventually it's gonna make you a beast in one particular area. That's why you need a routine because you can't trust yourself not to get off track. That routine is gonna keep you on track and make you a one percenter. You're playing against the Golden State Warriors. Score is 107-109. You guys are close to getting into the playoffs. You know exactly what happens in the game. You go up, you're about to take your shot, and then all of a sudden, boom, yeah. Achilles happens, right? He went and hit the free throws, and then you walked off the stage. Yeah. And you got the surgery guy. When I, I went in the trainer's room, my kids are in there, and you know they're looking at you and stuff, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, you know, it's all right, Dad's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. As a parent, you gotta set the example. You gotta set the example. This this is another obstacle. This obstacle cannot define me. It's not gonna cripple me. It's not gonna be responsible for me stepping away for the game that I love. I'm gonna step away on my own terms. And that's when the decision was made that, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. What freaking beast, bro. Hey, hey. Push yourself. So you want to be the best. You want to get to the top. You want to achieve success. I'm sick and tired of all you people out there that go around talking about what you want, what you're going to get what you're gonna have, what you're gonna do, where you're gonna go, and not doing shit to actually make it happen. If you're happy in life right now, then you can stop listening now, because this video ain't for you. The moments and situations you're steering away from are usually the things that need to be attacked head on. You're the one that needs to trigger that growth. You'll always be dreaming of a better life, dreaming of success, dreaming about the person you're capable of becoming. We've all got things we want to do, dreams of what we want our life to look like. The problem is, most of us are standing in a busy street just letting the opportunities in life pass us by. We're waiting for the perfect situation, the perfect circumstances, the perfect opportunity, the perfect time. There's never going to be a perfect time or the perfect moment. Take a look at the clock. This is your time. You know what you want, so go get it. It's there. If you want all these things in life and you're just thinking that by some miracle of life or some bullshit theory of the law of attraction it's going to magically happen, you've got to wake up. The only way to get what you want in life is to get to work and go and get it. To look at all your adversity and all the excuses square in the face and push yourself out of your comfort zone to achieve what you want. Your biggest growth moments come from a place of discomfort. If you're never willing to step outside into those fears, face the unknown, and see what's on the other side of them, you'll always be wondering what could have been. You can always do more. You always have another gear, another level of performance. You can always push a little bit harder, get up a little earlier, work a little longer, spend more time with the ones you love. Whatever it is you want more of, or want to be better at in your life, you have complete control over whether you get it or not.